Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and irritating and amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. The one, the only master of propaganda here, like Defender of the Fallen, here with my co host, Bass the Kitty Cat, currently trying to fall asleep on my chest or shoulder, sort of around the area, anyway. So I'm currently a bit reclined in my chair. We got in the North Bassett fighting for the Dead Army, the Soviet Union, Comrade Stalin here with the 5th Guards Tank Corps in the South, it is Labness fighting for the German Army, Deutschland. Das Fasland here with the first Panzer to show. We got Spearhead, we got German Mechanized, we got Jaeger Infantry, got Rifle Airborne Troops, and got Motor here. All in a riveting and exciting lineup here, I think, for a warming match on Mill Road. And a very big thanks to Olivier for joining in with my page supporters, becoming one of many heroic people there. So big thanks to Olivier, and of course, all my other page supporters. Other people. Can join this example of Patreon, sell Patreon themselves, or they can donate by PayPal. Links in the description. Finally, commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing also helps out. So, going to the MU42 versus double conscripts. We've got Engineers in Southfords. Meanwhile, Bassett here is putting most of his forces up north here. Loveness also focusing more westwards here with the MU42. Pioneers keeping roughly within range. Conley's here sort of following up into the back. Not really much here from Lumnus in the southeast, focusing more on keeping his forces within close coordination of each other. Third conscript there for Bassett. Gunny is moving into the small shed here. Pioneer is moving westward. Second gun is caught there for Loveness. So far, fairly quiet stuff here between the two sides. No shots fired yet. Second gun is caught halfway down there. Commander Charles, I mean, Gat Motors, of course, like the very likely pick here. Spearhead, Jaeger, Infantry, in case of the Wehrmacht player, tends to be the more popular ones. There are definitely some players who go for Mechanized, but it still tends to be relatively rare, I would say, in comparison to just, you know, either Spearhead or Jaeger, Infantry. Got to bring up here, gets the gun easy. here, troops are pressed there. No sign yet of any commanders yet, though. That's it, so far Bassett's build order is looking a lot like a guard motor build. Oh, four conscripts, in which case, airborne troops becomes a lot more likely here for Bassett versus Loveness. Up north here, pioneers this spot in the conscripts, but without support, oh, there we go, support coming in, they're gonna have a hard time. In the center there, Bassett backs off, realizes the fight against them before two is not going his way, and he just wastes man pass pointlessly. At the same time, though, this also allows Loveness to think more easily, just make a push to the car point. There's not really a lot of heavy cover, and there we go, Bassett here with airborne troops. Up north here, we got the Pioneers pushing back the conscripts. Falling back here in the south. Further south, and you can scramble on the victory point here. So far, Loveness got a bit of good initiative here, playing aggressively with his gun MD42, leveraging the power of the MD42 as efficiently as possible. Setting up, picks back, you know, push around there. Of course, also pretty much stops attacks here. That's it. It does leave a bit of a gap here, but if Bassett doesn't explode, that, then Loveness is actually in a pretty good spot. And Basil agrees. Troops setting up there. We got medics on the way. They've also got the flamethrower team here. There we go, large country force in the south, and these crawls go up for flank here. MD4 to repositioning, Loveness obviously starting to expect something's happening here. Bassett is just doing nothing for too long. He's clearly lining up for a big push here. Loveness machine there, definitely trying to figure out what's going on there. And you need to keep going for a deeper, deeper flank here. Sneaky play though, Bassett, definitely like to see that. Loveness not so much. Pioneer's quality of guard, more country in there. I think he's basically launching a diversion attack, allowing the country court here then to push on the car point. Basically, as then Loveness is sort of focused everywhere else. I think it's a pretty sneaky maneuver here by Bassett. And thumbs up to that. Bassett would also give a thumbs up, but cats are not exactly known for having thumbs. And there you go. Push with the car punt here. So, very nice display there. Just, you know, using uh, diversionary attacks to basically draw your opponent's attention where you wanted to, then, you know, gain the ground you want to gain without having to directly attack and suffer heavy losses. So, really good play there by Bassett. Really good play. Then suddenly Loveness is now running after Bassett as suddenly Loveness finding his resource cut off by Bassett in return. And Basil is definitely impressed by that as much as a cat can be, which is, in reality, not very much. He's almost got the field point there in neutral as well here. Oh, runs off of there to assist instead. Mm, I feel like I should have tried making the effort nonetheless, but I can see the logic here. Can't run a flank at the MU32 here. Loveness definitely finding himself overextended and overexerted here by Bassett and the Red Army. He's still got some time to go for the call for in those SVT40s, but still he's adding some pressure here. Field point running neutral here. I mean, with a swift and I would say, again, near brilliant maneuver, Bassett has managed to turn the game around here against Loveness. And again, even without necessarily requiring a head-on assault, but simply by outmaneuvering his opponent. That said, Bassett does come slightly off worse where he with the loss of a counter squad there. Good kill for Loveness, who has four Gunnery Escorts and the MD-42, so that slightly uh, undercuts some of the glory here for Bassett. 
Although he does return the favor and wipe one of Lovness' grenadiers. Yeah, Breed, I think, good to play, hard to play. So now you see Lovness return the favor again by hitting Bassett's card point again. But now Bassett's controlling both fuel points, even if he's got one of them not connected. That still gives Bassett a bit of a resource advantage over Lovness here. This match is really going places already here. And I think as I really, I think, could so just display how to play so it's efficiently. Basil certainly agrees. And you need to about to get wiped. That's going to be definitely painful for Basil. He's replacing the near squad, realizing those guys are toast in a more than one way. Lamnus launching a counter here with the Glenny 42. There's only so much Basil can do there, but again, he can buy time to keep Lamnus off the fuel point. So there you go. Fashion you need to score out there. Maybe we'll see some tech here soon enough from Bassett versus Loveness. Sandbags in the center. Machine can be positioning. He can also soon begin dropping weapons. That said, he's a bit short on the munitions, so... Not right away. He could do it to try and go for the Guards Airborne. We got the Armored Card for Loveness and the German Army. Bassett is first, I think, response to the is going to have to be a field gun here. As the 2-2 can of course, I think, quite a bit of havoc even with anti-tank grenades. But again, the map control for Bassett is very strong. And he could potentially like, try and get away with the T-70 rush here versus Lovenest, sort of. Well, of course, have to have dust that, but he's still going to eat the field gun first, which will definitely slow it down anyways. Bassett currently looking very smug for a cat here. Very pleased with himself. No commander yet here for Lovenest. He continues to... Remain hesitant there. We got the armored card out for Lovness and the first Panzer to be shown. The 222 like the Patrick B wagon, which by 1944 was roughly phased out there in favor of the 250 based armored car instead and heavier armored cars as the 222. Wasn't really good for off road in the actual one. Now I have to state this because it's like, I still remember one time when I put it down, it's like some, but it's good off road in the game. <laughs> yeah, funny that. But yeah, like in the actual war, off road, the armor cup performed pretty poorly, which when it reconnaissance vehicle is not great. So it was one that you know was steadily phased out in favor again of either armor cars that were heavy with more wheels, so you know stuff like the 250 based armored car there. So little fun fact there. We got the contrast name before two in the center. Pushing that back. Gonna use up here. We got the tech there for Bassett and Yank to go for the T70 relatively soon here versus Lovnest. Bale is finally getting the voice and fuel point back here. Pat 40 on the way there. Loveness clearly under no illusion as to what be coming his way in a few moments. It's not the ice cream van. There you go. Bassett can now go for the teaspoon light tank. That's how the way the map has progressed so far. I mean, Bassett has not been able to save a lot of munitions at all. I Meaning he's not been able to like, really leverage like the airdrop weapons he has Loveness so far, which is actually pretty good for Loveness. That is really good. T-70 halfway done, comes that being murdered out by the armored car MD-42 combo. He's moving forward here for Bassett with a flamethrower, the Rocks 3. Bending for the gunner, do you see it? Suppressed by the MD-42 there. T-70 is all right around the corner for Bassett, the Nerd Army. Big two points wise, Bassett also has a small lead over Lovenest. 475 is a 412. I'm covering back. So now the question is, can Bassett reach that T-70 as hard as possible here? I don't think Loveness has been laying down any mines. I could be wrong, though, but I haven't really seen, like, any signs of mines here from him. So there's not so much to worry about the T-70. That's it. If we could cause land a telemine in the T-70, that could, I think, fairly well give Loveness a massive advantage. There you go. We are finally also starting to see some weapon drops here. For the Soda Infantry, definitely giving uh, Bassett further hands up there versus Lovnus Gunadiz, who's also placing his losses. We also got Light Machines ready for his troops. Decent strike, can catch the MD42 and the Gunadiz in a pretty bad spot. And there you go. Gets a bit too eager here, gonna get within Pantafast range. Lovnus, of course, quick to Pantafast the T70, doing some nasty bit of damage there. In the actual war, though, that T70 would likely have been utterly toast because the Pantafast, which sort of this belt, you know, in the game showing sort of like a light snare weapon, was actually like a fairly potent anti-tank weapon if you can get within range, hit the tank with it. 
It was also fairly usable as a grenade launcher in a sense. In fact, the Soviets captured millions of Pantafers during Operation Backrashing, and they didn't use it primarily as an anti tank weapon, they used it primarily as basically a grenade launcher, sort of blowing up bunkers and whatnot. So, little fun fact there about the Pantafers, a little fun fact. We got there. Guards airborne is a possibility for Bastard. I don't think he's going to go for it. It is also worth noting, but he did skip a field gun here to go for the T70. But I still think, though, I mean, inevitably, he's going to have to go for a field gun here versus Love Nest. And Bastard decided he's got enough attention and he retreats to uh, well, behind the curtain. T70 need to repair, so the Pantafels caused it quite a bit of an impact on it. Another MD40 for Love Nest, further looking to shut down here Bastard's infantry heavy strategy. Not a bad idea at all, and certainly increasing the finding the very much sort of meta game. Double MD42 sort of several minutes in the game is starting to become more common. It's not like they go for double MD42s right away, but shall we say after 10 minutes, having a second MD42 as the very much becomes, I think, fairly common. Also worth noting, he actually manually reloads here. We actually get to see that, ensuring that the machine gun isn't like you know suddenly busy reloading in the middle of a fight, or even at the start of a fight. Here. So, thumbs up to Love. It's actually quite rare to catch a player actually utilizing that ability there. So nicely there. And Bassard here, deciding the current situation requires sharper message, commits to a second T's and Light Tank here versus Lovnist. He is going all in here versus his fascist opponent. A bold maneuver here with Bassard. Double T70, risky, but at the same time it works out. It can really give you a significant swing, but there's also challenges in losing both T70s, at which point you're in a pretty bad spot. But I can see the lot of for Bassam to with the fuel control he did manage to get earlier. And Lumnus has yet to take up. So Lumnus can't immediately punish this, but still, he does require he, you know, use of the T70s efficiently and aggressively, but not recklessly either. Some players, when they go for double T70s, have a slight tendency of getting reckless with them, at which point it doesn't matter they went for two because they'll just throw away one of them rapidly. Still, double T70 can be dangerous in the right hands. We'll have to see if Bassets are the right hands. Or they might as well be Pauls like Bassets. Rush for here for the armor cup of the Conscript. We all got six kills. Flash the two with air gun before treating the nice position here. Pretty much prohibits that from destroying. T Sin rushing in there with Ford Family Cannon here. There's the two, two shot misses, but it's close. It's close here. Oh, not great turn there. Not a great turn. There's a pack 40, but still. Oh, there we go. Got it. Great kill here for Bassett. Leaves Love and with the armor cart, leaving him. A bit more flat-footed here versus Bassett, as he has no mobile element to keep down the infantry. And now the T-Zone is pursuing these side as well here. And again, with one pack 40 and Bassett playing his T-Zone like this, it becomes very difficult for Lovnus to sort of like hold ground more easily. Because like, the pack can only cover one part of the map, so where the pack is, the other T-Zone puts some strike, and the other one can then act as bait to ensure the other, you know, the pack 40 stays where it is, for example. Or if he then moves, the other T-70 can get moved to move. There you go. He's sneaking up here to pen in the T-70 here. Bass realizes he might have made a slight mistake here. It's become the prey, in a sense, here. In sending up here for Lovnest. Boldly, I think, to keep the T-70 a bit from rushing in too fast here. Got the pack 40 moving as well here. Bass, I think, is not aware of what's coming. He still thinks the pack 40 is elsewhere. Could cost him the T-70 here. No. Nope. Just pulls away narrowly in time up north. You've got Contrast the Gun DSC. Two squads still got to go here with upgrades. Loveness has teched up. He could rush out a Stug or possibly an Austin here versus Bassett. Gun is routed. Why the action filled episode here between Loveness and Bassett? Gun is holding up here. Teasing is still waiting all the way up here. One kill, not so much else his name. Contrast taking in sandbags in the center. MD4 turning around here. Pack 40 back in the north here. May want to see if he can't get that T70 back here for some repairs. Second one in the south, they're being fixed up. And more like the Lovnus just going to go push from Panzer 4 here, but he could like rush on Austin versus Bassett. I mean, two T70s means he's not really exactly pushing for medium tanks anytime soon. Bassett is also going to bring up Max Machine to help deal with Lovnus infantry and again up to the double machine in Gewehren. Contrasting in there, going for the Pack 40. T70 finding the move here again, or not? Well, it is. South here, T-Sun on two rushing forwards here. I don't think Lovnest still has laid down any teller, mind. He just hasn't at the time. And there you go, Molotov from the machine gun. Lovnest defense here by the center is crumbling as Bassett and the fifth guard's tank call launches a fear assault here. Lovnest and the first panzer this one is in full retreat. We do get an Ostman here. We do get an Ostman here. I mean, again, it's going to be good. That's the infantry and the T-70. 
So I think it's a good choice here. It's also just crucially faster out than the Pantophone. Right now, Lavin has used something to ensure that just Bassett does not overrun him like this. It's Operation Backrash on, and he's Army Group Center. Then he's with the Teton Light Tank. He's got five kills. Touch two. There you go, Friedrich Blunt a bit. Maxim Harling away, machine gun fire. There we go. Bassett is just pulling through here. These again. Great sense of new here from Bassett has really managed to just outmaneuver Lovnest and just push him back here. That's it, both T7s need repairs, and there's now an Austrian flak panzer inbound for Lovnest and the German army. Phew, that was a lot. Grabbing the points here next to Lovnest base as well, cutting off resources, going for the fuel pond as well. Flak panzer though has arrived, and Bassett, of course, right now realizes he's made a critical error. He does not have any significant anti tank assets with which to stop the Ospin. This is like Lavner's real moment though because the T-70s can't do much against it and the Ospin can do a lot against Bass's Crown Force. Because again, it has a significantly high DPS there and anti-infantry capability. So Lavner's here going to turn on Bassett and the Red Army, forcing I think a possible full retreat here. Yeah, so definitely a good reminder that even if you're ahead you want to make sure you got some anti-tank assets because otherwise a sharp opponent can punish you like this. Hiccup, sorry about that. Another one. Worth noting here. We are 16 minutes of the game, then Lavin still hasn't yet to do. Ooh, who's a commander? Good lord, these hiccups. I haven't had these in some time. This bad. Must be all the excitement. Well, I have having plenty of excitement matches as well, though honestly, some of these on Iron matches have been great too. But any. But besides that, Spearhead, Jaeger Infantry, but increasingly feels like Spearhead, though. Could still be Mechanos as well here from Lovnest. We'll have to see, though. Fix up the Tyson Light Tank. Other one waiting reserves. Here we got the Sith Fleet. If you feel good, ready for Bassett. Awesome, the maneuver here. Fourth Company Squad have been equipped with the LMG 42. But yeah, just thanks to the Ospin Lovnest, we were able to just swing the entire match around there. He was about to be completely shut off the map, but the Ospin saved the day for Deutschland. Concentrating out here, north side. T70s are also rolling out here. Bassett against you might notice looking to manage effectively two prongs here of a sizable socialist pincer here against Bassett. T7s the gun do you see? Field gun is supporting the southern prong here. Interesting enough, so that's why he's expecting the Ospin to arrive. Or at least he's more concerned the Ospin could cause him trouble. Of north, there we got the Ospin though, and it's definitely throwing some wrenches here into Bassett's works. Or Spanners. Field rebounding here, pushing back the Gunnedia squad there. He will possibly need another field gun here before we get out any armor, anyways. Luminous probably has to here to spearhead with mortar attacks, Panzer Tactician, Reconnaissance Overflight, Fragmentation Bombs, and the Tiger Tank. Again, Spearhead is just very popular, offering a variety of fairly flexible abilities, like Fragmentation Bombs and the Reconzo Flight Pantactician, and some players can make use of the Mortar half Track. Black Panther with the Conscripts there. Black Panther running here for Lavnus, going straight for the Titan Light Tank, landing some light hits there. Up North, getting these calls pushed back with the Infantry Team, and there we go, Lavnus with a second pack, 40 versus Bassard. Could be that Lavnus is planning to go for a little Tiger Tank himself here versus Bassard. And back here, triple forcing healing, fix up the T70. Mortar for Bassett, definitely not a bad choice. And again, I think under current circumstances, another field gun would be a nice choice too. Then again, map is fairly short, and again, a good mortar in the right place can really make a mess of things for Lovnest. Of course, Lovnest could also benefit from a mortar himself, or even mortar half track. That calls does depend on what Lovin's plan is, so if he wants to go for the mortar after. He's planning to go for the Tiger Tank, he probably won't be going for the mortar after at all, though. Finally got some Telemans here from Lovin's, thumbs up. Doing so, fairly close to his opponent's chariot to, you know, gives him a good chance of basic lands in the blind spot of Bassett there, like he won't expect it because it's in his territory, in a sense. And that can definitely catch some players off guard. Country in Norfolk's here for Bassett. Maximus the Ospin there is a significantly one side engaged. The field, of course, does help out a bit. More weapon drops there for Bassett, finally. You may want to start taking up here for some armor versus Lavnest. And Lavnest can soon himself go for the Panzerfall. But again, it is possible. It is possible that Lavnest is planning 
Filled up for target tank, not at least something from tier 4. Loving this quick to utilize some air now. now. Very good. That gives them good heroes with the T70s and everything else is. So that is definitely a strong ability to use there right now. Also removes any potential surprise element here. Bassett could unleash against Lovnest. As I think at this point, Lovnest is quite aware that Bassett is a devious player who, if, like, you know, left unattended, could spring a surprise and Lovnest turn the entire game around against him once more. So having access to every content definitely does a lot in ensuring that Bassett's surprise element is minimized as much as possible. Feel them moving in there. Teasing and bombarding. They're going to use half the squad. Gom do get a Panther from the Teasing Light Tank. No Panther yet for Love Nest. No Sun Attack either. Forgot the Flag Punch rushing in. All the one gained. That's it. Bassett's down to the hit one massive problem right now. He's down to run out victory points at a rather significant pace. He's got 298 versus his opponent's 401. He needs to do something about these victory points soon here versus Love Nest. So this could become very awkward for Bassett, no matter how many T70 he has versus Love Nest. It's about to, I think, lose this one here. Yeah, that's going to be second pack 40 hit, and that's going to grab the flames. Unless the pack 40 misses, at which point Bassett can count himself a very, very lucky man. More so they could move it further forward here for Bassett. Lay down some smoke screens. Mechanized stomach company for Bassett. Thumbs up. As for Loveness, we do get tier 4 there. So either heavy pants core play or a tiger stall here from Loveness. Awesome, almost knocked out. Again, the Ospin really just gave Loveness a huge sort of swing back against Bassett. Without the Ospin, I think Loveness' situation would have been much worse off. North Eagle needs the Conscripts here, flanked by the sp 40s I think those Gunnies will have to fall back in. There you go, ace level Conscripts with the semi automatic rifles. Do get a rifle in ADM. Bassett, too slow to retreat, I've realized in time. Risks a full wipe. There you go, local foliage. Let's the last man, Yevgeny, there to survive. Max and South Abyss with the Gunner, do you see? Ospin almost fixed up. Are you guys okay? I'm saying, oh, y'all, totally fine, totally fine. He's not fine. The only reason he's sticking so close to the target is because he shut his pants. You told you wouldn't promise. Well, you know, Hitler promised not to invade Czechoslovakia either. You asshole. Well, I am Austrian. Anyways, Asia the Father for Bassett. Bit of skirmish in there as well. He's marching forwards there for Bassett, straight for the MD42 in the center. Got a pack for the ready. So it's quite impressive he's been able to do so well with the T double T70s nonetheless. Flares being deployed here at Bass as well to get further an advantage as against Lovness. Again, making use of reconnaissance assets himself. Thumbs up to Bassett. Graham Northern Pump with the conscripts. Flat pants in the move there. And there you go, Telemine goes off, knocking out one of Bass's two T-70s at the same time. Lovelist is building a heavy panzer core. He could sell him going for the Tiger tank, but he could also just go for the Panther. H-5 tank has arrived here for Bassett and the Red Army. Based off the T-34 chassis. It will later be replaced by the SU-100 of that set. The SU-100 ran into issues with the gun, actually. So they will end up using the gun of the issue 5 for a brief file on the 100 chassis that was being known as the issue 85 m which had the better frontal arm as well then slightly little bigger chassis much thicker armor which is tough, much tougher for german guns to penetrate fun fact there fun fact Fishing five shoots, misses, T70 gets hit in there, and he's going for the Panzer now for now? Really? That's a curious decision here by Lovness versus Bassett under current circumstances. Definitely not what it would have been my first pick out the Heavy Panzer Corps when he's also close to Tiger Tank or anything like that. Here it comes again, but this is Lovness, and he is obviously a much better player than me, so... Probably knows what he's doing. Oh, wait. Panzer for 40 out here for Lovnest. Pack 40 fires going against the T70 here. One shot goes through. Contra the rushing at both pack 40s, but lacking any significant firepower. I don't think can quickly clear them out. And we also got the flag Panzer going in to block such a maneuver. Panzer for 42 moving up here. Contra being multi at close ranges. T70 is farming up here.
Going to hit the Austin there with a the huge fire potential there. Good target weak point there. Damage the Austin quite a bit there. Then he's almost like the T send the info to his ultra trouble here. That's it. They're striking hard here. Loveness once more. We'll have to see follow us with the next Katusha could be likely. Go for T 34 from 6. So we might go for another issue to 5. North point that makes east here by Bassett's Frontovix. We got the Flag Panzer Nuhi though heavily damaged. Bit risky here by Loveness, but at the same time, you can understand, like, wanting to ensure that, you know, Bassett doesn't uh, get too much of a bleed here going against Loveness. Season of Southern Point T, I think it's stand to move back the T-Sun a bit there. You should finally repairs. Going to bring forwards here for Loveness. Maximum trouble. So what is Bassett planning next? It's looking like other oh, Kachushi and other Ishida 5 tank destroyer versus Lovenest. As for Lovenest, he can soon go for the Panther, but again, he could be planning a Tiger tank here versus Bassett and the Red Army. We shall have to see what Lovenest ultimately decides on here versus his Marxist Leninist opponent. Kachushi there for Bassett. Some rocket cell of his own. Lavenous Panzer Web is ready to yet to reveal itself here against his opponent. But is ready to unleash hell there. Northern points he's with the conscript, strict reinforcing healing. Katusha halfway done. Well he can go for the Panther now, but it does us. It's starting to look like Lovenist is indeed planning for the Tiger Tank himself here. Mortimer Quartz here for Bassett. Aero comes again from Lovenist. Very consistent usage of that ability, by the way. Southie, teasing around the gun to see Ace on that one. Very good there for Bassett. Let's go for Lovenist men. And he's probably just waiting for the right target to strike here with a Panzer Alpha. He is patient, as you can see there. And we got the Katusha out for Bassett and the Red Army. Both pack 40s here, by definitely presenting a big target for Bassett's rocket launcher. We'll have to see if he commits to that, though. Using North against the conscripts. Seven kills on the Flak Panzer. Pack 40 quality catching the issue to five. Heavy damage inflicted. Kachusha remains very much on the serve here. And there you go. Lovin's going for the Titan tank. I'm guessing he's hesitant about that Kachusha because the Avid constant doesn't want to like, risk it get spotted. And then say Lovin's from the pack 40 or anything else to quickly save the Kachusha. So I think the Avid constant is basically causing Bassett to place Kachusha very conservatively until he knows he doesn't look. And there you go. Barrage off here against all the bunch up units around the entrance to Bassett's base. In this case, though. Ends up doing raided lonely kills from Guy. North the Panther Fast Osman goes for the T70 here. Need to get the Ishida fighting to assist there. Maybe some tanks, but we got the side tank running here for Lovenest and the German army. Adding the pin mounted MD42 there. Thumbs up to Lovenest. Always a good addition there. For your tanks, if you can upgrade them. Mortar moving up here. Maxim sending up here. We got the gunners around here with the conscripts. And of course, we got the flag pants here. Proved to be, as usual, a pain in the arse here for Bass's infantry. Got these five tanks running forwards here, closing in a red 21. South here, we got the Titan up here for Lovenist. Asia Five shoots, misses the Ostwin. Can't regard it. There we go. Machine gun and gun is routed. Fish fire rolling back, doing a bit of air reconnaissance here. Bassett finding himself very much with his back against the wall here. As Lovin is just very slowly pressures Bassett across the entire front now. Tire tanks right in the south, here, engaging the max of crew and. Pan does a bit of damage, but gains no kills from it. There we go. Obliterate Shibgeni. Mines here from Bassett. It's a bit late there. I think you should have those mines up much, much sooner. Oh well. 
Better late than never, I suppose. Targeting running back here. And there you go, caught the music done with the Osman. Definitely some nice losses there for Bassett. At least he didn't lose the gun uh, in Guineas and Time. We got the Guineas in the Corp and the Maximum the Controls here. A bit of a pincer there. And further than south here, Lovness is laying hands on the southern field point there, denying it to the Russians. Very good play there by Lovness, keeping up the pressure, keeping up the momentum now. Bassett, I think, is going to need like some greater maneuver here to be able to push back Lovness here. But he's himself playing fairly passively. I think all the constant air reconnaissance is causing Bassett to be a lot more hesitant because he doesn't quite have the ability to generate that amount of surprise he probably wants for his attacks like he could early in the game versus Lovnest. And there we go again. Lovnest just pops another one. I mean, with the current amount of income he has, he can pop one almost like every minute. Well, minute and a half roughly, which is like pretty often in the game. Makes it much harder for Bassett to like spring any element of surprise here in Lovnest. So, very powerful ability in a the sense there. Very powerful ability. Titan moving up here. Shoots and wrecks the gun to his cover. But it seems to encourage him to get within Pantafaz range. Field gun is coming in from Titan. Got 74 plus a few and 42 here. Titan shoot, shoots whiffs. And the center gun is in the fire here. Mord firing down death. Osman holding back. And there go Katusha Bauchi. Not doing too much here for Bassett. A certain argument, he could have just gone for T-34-6 rather than Katusha here. I feel like that was also, I think, Bassett's overall playstyle better than the Katusha. I mean, again, Bassett mostly served best for being aggressive and attacking and flanking. And in that sense, the Katusha isn't quite, you know, that tool there that really assists him in those endeavors. So I also feel like he could have been using the more to lay down smoke strings here versus Lovness. We've got 49 versus 342. The situation here for Bassett is starting to get pretty dire here as Lovness is now more or less in control here. Front of the being mauled by the Vetchney 2 Flak Panzer. H5 lands a good hit there. We got a rocket run against the Osvin and gets it! Very nice there for Bassett, but doesn't really help the fact that he's significantly on the back foot here versus Lovness, and he's still not really like, you know, making any major maneuvers. And Lovness calling in the Conzo flight again. Bassett could go for another tank. In fact, going for another tank for some, some time ago here. Titan was the T70, good shot there. Not like the T-Sun had just been sent flying and just battered into pieces with an encounter with an 88mm armor piercing shell, to be honest. Constantly mauled there. Finish with the T-70. Oh, getting too close. That could be a quick loss there. The T-70 hit to London is going to be And there you go. Fritz gets it. Being Bassett just the farming field gun here. Plus the Katusha. And he's about to lose his issue to farm as well here to Loveness. Starting to look pretty bad here for Bassett. He's down at 18 points versus the Loveness 342. And at this point, it does look like it's a GG here in favor of Germany. We do get one Kitchen Bauchi trying to catch the Gundies, but already by the time it fires, the Gundies have moved out of the outer fire there. Wasting the rockets. Nine points, six points. And there you go. Bassett surrenders. A loss for the Red Army. A victory for Deutschland here. A fierce fight. On Mill Rope. A really good strong start there for Bassett, but the double T seventies I think to an extent worked out, but there's just that particular flaw there of the counter strike for the Osfind and him just having no anti tank weapons ready at all. At which point Lovens ready to like seize initiative back. And then after that, Bassett just seemed to lose initiative overall. He just became less aggressive. He lost some of that spark that had really helped him in the early game up new Lovness. And I think from that point on he just you know he lacked some of that vision. I think he should have gone for T thirty four some sixes, maybe consider some guards airborne with some machine guns and you know Try to leverage his attacks more heavily, plus he's used the smoke and the mortar, which is certainly a bit of surprise to because I feel like a lot of aggressive players would benefit a lot from using smoke barrel just doing their attacks. So I feel like Bassett were looking that definitely did not do him any favors. I love his meal plate, I think a solid, you know, steady game. He got definitely got up in the early game, but he was able to like capitalize on Bassett's weaknesses and mistakes and slow turn the game around there. So I'd say definitely a top notch match here. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell a friend, tell a family, but don't tell enemies. This is Imperial Link saying, Dane saying cheers and see you all tomorrow for our last episode. Bye.